get the mute button right now. You're welcome, everyone. That's uh, Marissa Roberto. I'm Brody Moore, and this is Unmuted, the show with the esports and gaming hot topics, hot tweets, and spicy memes. At any point in time, one of us can hit that trusty mute button that we saw right there and shut the other person up and put me and them out of their misery. Sadly, I just wasted my mute, but let's be honest, kind of worth it. Once you're muted, you will remain muted for 30 seconds. Producer Tyler's got two minutes on the board for each topic that you can see at the bottom of your screen. Now, everyone showed your ears because M. Rob, I think, is unmuted. You back? Yeah, yeah. Why are you gonna kill my flame like that, man? Why are you gonna stomp on my fire? I'm already out. Dude, no. He used no. it. It's over. All right, let's get to it here. The biggest story today is the conclusion of a month long saga with controversies following it at every turn. Denial Esports is no more. Over the weekend, Denial Esports co owner Zachary Smith announced that the org would be closing its doors in a bizarre Twitter rant. Smith blamed players, outside observers, and other teams in a long statement before declaring that esports was like the moon landing, that it had little to no physical returns. Players and orgs are still waiting on payments from Denial, which total over 100,000 US dollars. Oh my god, it's like a million Canadian. Brody, what do you make of all this? Like, are you sad to see Denial go in such a way? No. Oh, really? I mean, like, so. That, if you guys go through it, uh, like try to find it online, but the actual Twitter thread, like it looked like he's just like, I don't know if I should feel, I, like I almost feel bad for him, but at the same time, you also know the other side of things. Yeah. Like it seemed pretty well reasoned. Like he wasn't just cursing left, right, and center, mm. but he was calling out a lot of people. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Like calling out players for doing drugs and stuff and hookers and like. Oh my gosh, you know, I know. It, the, the funniest thing is like he, he sort of threw some shade at Sir Scoots, but like yeah. it wasn't like real shade. It like seemed like respectful shade. Well, he said that you were like, you pulled off the old man yelling on the lawn. He's so, like, like now that. Now that I'm not here, I, good luck writing things because I was well, all the drama. So, so it's like was, he was aware that, was that separate, he was the drama? That was to a journalist. He said to the journalist. So he mm. separated Sir Scoots from the journalist. Guess, yeah. And to the journalist, it was like, well, like, I mean, yeah, you, you did this, but sure, you're going to miss me when I'm gone now. Like, who are you going to write about now, basically? Yeah. So, like, ba just saying that he's seen all the salt, he's seen all the things people are saying about him, and this was his final, his once and for all unleash of just flaming everybody like he just took a torch and burned any bridge he's built in this industry but i guess it was already kind of burnt for him within the industry itself just when it comes to investors yeah. and stuff like it's just a bad look man i don't know where he goes from here and what is what is i don't think he is. planned on going anywhere i think this that's what i'm saying this almost felt like a a good out for him like it, it as i said it felt fairly reasoned it felt okay you know some people were like well maybe he's just making things up but like I don't know. I, I don't think he could have said any of these things beforehand. Because well, like if he if he had said them a few months ago, it would have just made denial situation all worse anyways. This well, was no. a, a last outage, just kind of middle finger to the sky. Yeah. I'm out. I hate y'all. Yeah, yeah, guns blazing. Let's yeah. take everybody out. I guess he doesn't plan on staying in esports as he flamed esports in such a way. It seems like also the moon landing was very important. It was inspiration no, for no, the American I, people. Yeah, it was, but the fact remains that it was, you know, probably <sighs> not how it took place yeah. and how everybody thinks it was happening but I wasn't just the so, hashtag at so the end. Yeah, um, I don't know. Like, I do, I do feel for him because he just feels burned by so many people. But it's just a bad look to go and go on a rant, blaming everybody and not really taking any ownership for yourself. I mean, obviously there have there was just steps made here. What? Oh, are we, are we done with time? Yeah, we're about 500 minutes oh, in okay, right now, well, Marissa. Sorry. God, oh, okay, next week Nintendo will hold a Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Tournament at E3. But it's a little weird in that it will involve items and a vastly different rule set from competitive <laughs> Smash tournaments. In an interview, Nintendo of America. America's senior marketing director Bill Trinan explained why it's different. Put simply, Nintendo doesn't view its own tournaments as esports. Instead, it wants to let the esports community do its thing while Nintendo creates fun events for newcomers. Mm. Marissa, um, I, it's kind of nice that they actually have an official word now. Out I love there. I love Trin Tran. If you follow him on Twitter, he's really great. It's just at Trin Tran. Do you, do you um, think this is a, a good philosophy, or is it just more just sound like an out because they don't know how to do esports? I don't think it's that they don't know how to do esports. They have a lot of money and they can pay people who do know how to do esports, and that could be a thing. But they don't. But th but they don't because it's always been Nintendo of America's thing or or their mo and that Bill had just reiterated here that. They just let the community take care of themselves. They've always let the community take care of themselves, and look how they thrive. Like they made the community. But they could do yeah, so much better if they sure. had official support. Imagine, I'm not even gonna look at melee. Like, I love melee. Fine, move on past melee. Mm. And promote your newest game. Even use your esports as a marketing tool. But imagine how big 
ultimate could be if they had money behind it. Right now, it is all purely grassroots funded. When I was running events, it was all out of pocket. I either broke even or even lost money a lot of times. Okay, but Brody, then do right? you see where the problem lies here? Because these are big companies, and obviously their bottom line is to, like, they've got to look at their bottom line. They want to make the most money possible. And if that's if they're looking at this and they're saying, you know what, there's not the kind of money here that we want to make, then why would they invest their time, energy, and money into it when the community has been taking care of itself from time? It has been, but it could be bigger. Take the marketing money you're putting into your non-esports events and put them into the esports events. Now you but, have that hardcore community. But if they've seen return from those non-esports events, then why wouldn't they keep doing them? I don't right? even know. Like, obviously, I don't. I don't have the numbers, so like, I don't know if they actually have. But I do know. Again, uh, with a Japanese company, they're very like loyal and structured yes. to old times. But th that's sometimes can be an issue because they don't move forward. They don't see it, how these things can help. It, so maybe that's what it is. Strictly just like, nope, this is the way we've always done it. We're always just going to deal with fun, even if you know it could bring us more in from uh, the esports scene. Maybe, but they make money the way they make money and the way they've always made money. They're going to keep doing it this way and keep innovating with their yeah. peripherals. That, that's all it is. Final thought, I don't know. I almost just kind of see it as like a uh, kind of like screw that scene. We don't want to deal with them. But at the same time, it is very nice to just have a definitive answer. All right. You, they just said, they, you he know, just gave it to you. He said, they I, take care of yourself. You take care of yourself. That's literally what I'm saying right now, Marissa. You're not listening. Okay, okay, I now. said that it's good that he Shut said up. that. The Jesus. 2019 LCS Summer Split just kicked off, and now we know where the finals will be held Detroit, Michigan. The event will be held in the Little Caesars Arena from August 24th to the 25th, and it will be sponsored for the first time ever by Rocket Mortgage, who sponsors 100 Thieves. The LCS finals are always held out side of Los Angeles. Past events have been held in Miami and Toronto. Brody, what? I've got a question for you. Okay. Uh, should the finals be sponsored, particularly by a company that uh, already sponsors an LCS team? Yeah, that's a that's a very look, that's yeah. a very tricky situation to be in because that is conflict of interest uh. slightly. Because you're going in, you're sponsoring the whole thing. Do you now get to dictate what? sponsored uh, companies are also at that event. You get to dictate everything. Mm -hmm. Can you shut out sponsored uh, um, companies from your like opposing orgs? Like, can you, do you have control over that? That is where, that's a big no-no. That's mm. a, a no, do not do that. But at the same time, you know, if, if someone's willing to put up the money, why, why is anyone else gonna be like, no, let me spend the money on this. You, right, um, it's just an interesting sponsor. Like, yeah. like when you think about it, like Rocket Mortgage, mortgage I'm just not like we're talking about it now. So maybe this is their this I is like it. their whole point. I like, like it because it's almost mortgages. like Rocket League. Yeah, I yeah. The second you see Rocket, <laughs> Brody's ears just perk up. No, it's not. It's just weird because so many young people are watching this stuff, right? And I don't, yeah. and I don't know. I mean, I, maybe they need mortgages now. No, it's, so, it's just so well, the, the, the thing you're looking at, I mean, like, even, even Rocket League had some weird ones, too, right? Like, okay. we had, like, insurance companies, like, State Farm and stuff. Yeah. What, the, what these companies are doing is, is they're, they're looking at young. this very impressionable young audience, yeah. and they're saying, okay, they don't need this product now. Yeah, yeah. But in the next Split. 10 or 5 to 10 years, they are going to need this. Yeah. And if we just push our brand, push our brand on them, you know the first thing that's going to come to their mind? Is is our brand? That's when I right. say when I say auto insurance, first thing that comes to your mind is probably Geico, just because of their commercials, right? Do, do you need it right now? Maybe not, yeah. but it just it still comes to your mind, so it'll be the first thing you look up. It's just smart marketing. Oh, you know what they're doing. It's brilliant marketing. But yeah, maybe it is a little iffy. The fact the that they the conflict of interest yeah. thing is where I get a little sketched out on it. Yeah, with 100 Thieves. 100 Thieves is already like. They're already kind of locked into this like org drama too going on as well. Like you just don't a want more, bit, yeah. just like a little bit, a little sprinkle of it. You don't want to have e add even more fuel to the fire yeah, that I'm, is burning right now. It's it's you just be careful because that can just get get sketchy. Yeah. Anyways, do you guys remember Fallout 76? Yeah, of course. Unfortunately, but this is bug-filled, feature-lacking multiplayer Fallout game that got ravaged by fans and critics. Well, it turns out that Todd Howard agrees with the criticism, calling it well deserved. In a brand new interview with IGN, he said Fallout 76 had a difficult development, of course, and that reflected in the release product. However, Howard stressed that it's not how you launch a game that's important; it's what the game becomes that is, and praised the direction that it was heading. Hmm. Do you agree with that sentiment? Or you're just like, no, that's just like lazy. You released a broken game. Should we just judge them based off that initial launch? I mean, because a lot of games are. We, we have that huge like 
surplus of like alpha games now, like yeah. early access games. Is that a problem to you? Because it, it kind of gives them a way to like make money before they're even done making it, the game. It does have you triggered. Well, with a uh, company like Bethesda, I don't really think they need to make money before <laughs> they finish making the game. The, it's a company that has money and will continue yeah. to get money just off of the Skyrim series alone. Yeah, alone, yeah. Um, so they're fine with that. Yes, you know what, making video games, yeah, it's tough work for sure. And I'm sure the team was under crunch and there's all these things that come in the way. Can and like, you give them you know, more you, time? You fix one glitch and then another one pops up. Like, yeah, give them more you, time. You, you do, you give Kay. them more time, but they, you, they're beholden to publishers as well. Or like if they had a partnership with Xbox and they had to deliver, like think of all that stuff that comes into play. Like it's it's business. They also have to think of their sponsors and people that have to make happy. Like all of that stuff comes into play, right, with this stuff. So I do love Todd so much and I want to believe everything he says. Yeah, that's the he thing. Is, is, like this nice is this just a clean up excuse? Is this just a, oh, we screwed up. Here's a nice way to make it seem like, you know, we're actually the good guys here. No, nah, man, I think you screwed up. I mean, like, you got to take it in the words of Miyamoto. So a delayed game is eventually good, but a bad game is forever bad. I don't believe yeah. in, in it's, it's it's tough. Like if you release a game, it should pretty much be done. Now mm. I almost have to c contradict myself and say that Classic. I really like. No, 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 I'm devil's advocating myself. Just argue myself all day. Um, is that No Man's Sky did it, and I really appreciate that it is better now. And now I bought yeah, the game, right? Yeah, and that that took a while, and I took time with it. But apparently, this Fallout 76 has gotten better. I think the issue I still have with Fallout 76 is they're still capitalizing on players as much. But the items in game are ridiculously priced. They're still trying to just gouge your wallet, right? Like I just want I just want no to talk come forward least. and like say something about that awful collection collector's edition, whatever the f it no, was that people that. were. Okay. They'll look at the that meme. Be, Todd's very good at understanding memes. He'll look at the meme and he'll address that, but he's not going to address anything. Else. Okay, fine, fair. Listen, it's time to check in with streamers in Clip It. First up, we have a clip from Vessi, who apparently does a pretty good Mickey Mouse impression. Oh, uh -huh. hey, Buster. Let's get this done. Oh, yeah. Why do you sound like Mickey Mouse? Because I am Mickey. Oh, yeah. Live from the Magic Kingdom. Are you... Oh, uh, can you put Goofy on the mic? What? You don't like me? No, Goofy's not here. I like, I like all the characters. I like all the characters. I watch you every day. Thank you so much, Buster. Oh, yeah. We hit those. <laughs> Why are you playing Fortnite? I thought, you're, I thought you're supposed to be doing some playing shows. Doing your show. I want to be good like Ninja. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was so sweet. That was the sweetest thing ever. I just love his reaction. He wanted to hear, you wanted to talk to Goofy right I away? I suppose, because like the whole time I was sitting there, I was what? thinking that he sounded a little bit closer to the pedophile from Family Guy, Herbert or whatever his name. Rudy. <laughs> and it changes the whole context of the clip. Go back and listen to it again with that in mind now. Uh, I'm just trying to think of Herbert. He's like, he's like oh, that's nice. What oh, is that's he say? nice. Oh. That's nice. Why did you come Something over like here? That. Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's a little Mickey Mousey, but I think they must have done They're very that voice similar. based off of Mickey Mouse. But now I need to know if you do a Mickey Mouse impression. Do I? Absolutely yeah. not. I bet you do. <laughs> Nope, not close. We're moving on. No, our next clip comes from Dr. Disrespect, who has some thoughts on the Courage and Nate Shot Show announcement. The Courage and Nate Shot Show? That's what I'm saying. Courage and Nate. This is good. Closest friends, Courage, who's done an incredible job of building his brand over these last few years, has officially joined 100 Thieves, and we have created our own podcast together, The Courage and Nade Shot Show, presented by Cash App. This makes me really want to start my own podcast. Yes, we play games. I'm the host. We tap into popular people. Me, of course, dominating the conversation like usual. Like... <laughs> If these guys can get away with it, imagine what the two-time can do. Of course, it'd be probably national television, not, and I YouTube, cannot, not YouTube, but. I not even begin to explain how excited I am to embark on this journey with you. This is something that I've wanted to do for a very long time. I give it five episodes. <clears throat> All right, let's move along, ladies and gentlemen. Yo, I would just, okay. So I, I never really liked disrespects. Like, Why? like, I love that he can stick to his character. I always appreciated yeah. that. But I never really cared for the character because it was just like, 
Um, Truly? I don't, yeah, it was just it was just super just it was rude, and I'm like that's yeah. just not my style. Yeah. But you know, the more you just realize, okay, you know, he's it's is just a character. Yeah. It is fun, and it's a genius because he gets away with just throwing shade. And he's like, Everything. hey, it's not me, it's just my character. Yeah. But I would absolutely 100% watch a podcast with Doctor. With Doctor. Uh, would you watch a podcast with Nate Shot and Courage though? That's the uh, question. F I would watch five episodes, and then I would watch the ten that Doctor Disrespect makes because you get bored of it. Inter okay, <laughs> that is story. very fair. Well, shout out to Doctor Disrespect because he was in Toronto at this game two of the Raptors. Oh, yeah? Warriors game, yeah. Was he was, everyone was snapping pics of him. He was in full garb, like oh, full doctor yeah. disrespect. Yeah, just sitting there. And like so many people that don't play video games or have no idea about this. This, like, Who is this guy? guy? <laughs> yeah, he's the best he's ever. He's a time traveler from the 70s. Uh, yeah, 100. All the sports stations covered it and everything. It was so great. I just love seeing that. I love seeing the crossover. Uh, but yeah, I do love Dr. Disrespect. And I think he has a point here, but also feels bad for Hex and Hitch because it, at Optic, because they do the same kind of thing, they do a podcast, mm -hmm. and Courage just left Optic for 100 Thieves. There's a lot mm. of drama going on, uh, but uh, I'm gonna move on here because I can't get into we, it We should just add a drama thing for you to do. Yeah, we might. <laughs> it really is the best time of day where we scroll the Twitters to bring you all the things the pros bless us with on their timeline. It's the best when they remind us that we have a lot of stuff and need to spring clean ASAP. Pro Koshima tweets, when you're moving soon but don't know what to do with all this, look at all this stuff. Look at all those keyboards, Brody. How many Brody. keyboards does he have, So dude? There's like five there. Yeah, controllers, things that are still in boxes. Like, honestly, like what, what do you do with this stuff? Because I just had a cleaning sash this Will weekend as well. you do with it? Yes, because you- pack you, it up, carry it to your new place, leave it in a box and never look at it again because you don't want to get rid of it. Yeah. That's what I did. I have so many boxes. I moved so much in the past few years. Like it was just a, like different apartments, like in the same building. In Daddy's building. It's no. I was so I had to move like down the hall and stuff. But I have everything in boxes. Yes. I've been like so every if I need something, I'll go and find it. And if it's too deep in a box, I'll convince myself I don't need it. Do you have a, Do you have a box full of wires? I do. Yeah. I actually have multiple boxes full of wires. Right. You never know where you're gonna need those. Well, that's the thing is that we never reach for them. We never need them. And I then all of a sudden I pull I can't out. Find it. No, but like I have so many things and I pull out my game gear and of course I left the friggin' double A batteries in there and it oh, they they exploded. Like exploded. So it just ruined the game gear. Like you just don't think of the stuff. You pack it away and then you you know, say you're gonna sell it later or something, but selling all that stuff is yeah. also a job or like doing giveaways, that's a job too. So now basically I just have boxes of stuff. Same. It's not fair, it's not right. They, uh, it's okay, it just makes you feel like you got a lot of cool stuff. No, it makes you feel like a hoarder. Uh, well, yeah, but don't make me feel bad about myself. I have okay. a lot of boxes. Anyways, a lot of people in the gaming world, including us right here at this desk, had an opinion about Ninja's recent interview where he said he wants to be remembered as the grandfather of gaming. Longtime video games journalist Ben Silverman quotes Ninja's quote and says, Buddy, I want to be remembered as Ralph Bear too, but he was already a person. Mm, mm, Kappa. Mm, Just mm, straight up. Like, fired. how you get it? The, for real, like, Bear is the grandfather of gaming. He yeah. made the brown box. Yeah. which is what we got games like Pong and stuff. The first video game console, you, I just, it triggers me so much. I mean, I can't say I much know. more on it. It's just really like, you're not the gash dang grandfather of gaming, dude. You're a streamer and you got lucky. Again, I think he was just, uh, the quote was maybe taken out of context. He sounds like it a 12-year-old. It was print. Yeah, that's just what happens. He just shouldn't do print interviews anymore. Let's just throw that out there. You should just stream, because that's like the only thing he's good at. Oh, geez. Okay, moving on. Our last profound thought is something so triggering, so disgusting. Some of you may need to look away. Katie, my love, you nasty. She tweets, I hope your Friday is as delicious as mine. It's, yeah, it's for me, okay. mac and cheese. To be fair, it's not that's like... Gross. It's not a. It's not a lot of ketchup. Like that's that's an no, appropriate. No, but that was gourmet. Yeah, mac but and no. Cheese. Like I'm I'm talking on the ketchup amount right now. Like that's still a good. That's a decent mm. amount. You put it in. You need a proper like ketchup to noodle ratio. By the time you get to the bottom of that delicious bowl of mac and cheese, you're you're out of ketchup. And now you got to get up. You got to go to your fridge because you already put the ketchup away, and you got to put more in. And that's just nobody wants to do that. By the time you no, get back and you, mac and cheese is cold, guys, that was a good amount of chicken you, and cheese. You don't need ketchup on mac and cheese. What are you talking about? You're no, talking no, no, about no, no, those no, guys no. that puts ketchup on their no, steak. No, I bet you. Are you? No. Why would you ever say that to me? You said some mean things, but that is just beyond. <laughs> that is. I'm. I'm about to walk off the show you, right you now. Will, that is you just well rude. Done it too, didn't no. You? You I done it too. No. 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 Rare to meet him. Rare. No. Jesus. KD though. Kraft dinner. Mac and cheese. Craft Craft mac and right. cheese. In, in Canada, you, we call it KD. If you, that, two bowls, one without ketchup, one with ketchup, 
Uh, they're two different flavors. Hold on, I don't even know if people in America know what Kraft Dinner is. Kraft, yeah, it's Kraft Mac and Cheese. Kraft no, Mac yeah, and Cheese. it's just it's Mac, exactly. Kraft Mac and Cheese. A couple. Yes. We just call Kraft Dinner here in yes. Canada, so you know. No, Welcome. That was a good Don't put ketchup on your stuff, though, please. No. You're done. Only Stop French judging fries. people. Let's move on because it's time to get some crowd controlled. We've collected some mindless content for you over the weekend and are proud to share it with you right now. To start our week off right, we need a dose of Rocket League. Cellar FX has brought our virtual soccer game to IRL soccer with some fun editing. There's so much to break down there. First off, the quick chat BM. Cute. You got the quick chat BM yeah. with just what a saves. Yeah, yeah. Perfect time, time chat out. Then the score was at 420. It was Noob Master 69. And the kid, the goaltender, is just sent to the moon. He yeah. is gone. Someone check on that kid. Make sure he's okay. I love stuff like that. That was, no, that was brilliant. I need more of that. I would watch an entire, I actually might watch some football if uh, the whole thing was edited like that. I thought you said you liked soccer or football. Mm -hmm. I thought you said you'd like soccer or football. No, no, I would prefer that over basketball. Oh, I see. If you're comparing, yes. you don't actually watch either. No, I watch Rocket League. You're the worst. Oh, oh no. What's up? I feel something. What is it? Oh, oh no, raise your wallet. It's the Steam Summer Sale coming Ah, uh, Gaben, please have mercy on my library. Dude, I already own like 20 games that I haven't even played yet. For real, like for real. How big, like, do you, overall, do you buy, like overall. how many games do you have in your Steam library that you just haven't played yet? Zero. Really? You have very good control over yourself. I when I see a Steam PC Summer Sale, dude, huh? I don't PC game. Oh, f okay, you know what, that is fair. I was the wrong person totally to, to pick on. I actually have so many games that like, I could, I could just not buy a game for the next like 15 years and have so many games to play. Oh my but gosh, I don't, it's I like when you open the fridge and you're like, oh, there's nothing to eat, but there's like so many things to eat. It's like that with my Steam library. Sometimes oh my I'm God, like, you're being super braggy today. Why am I being braggy? You got, you got so many things to eat in your fridge? No, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying it's like when that happens. I it's, remember a time when I actually had food. It's boxes in there. When I actually yes, had <laughs> food. So let's not talk about what's in my fridge. It's probably all expired anyways. Our last post shows streamer Jamie Pine's mom putting on her best solid snake impression. She might need some practice and the web app to implement the search function that way. And if I ever want to change something like the, the rate in which it debounces. And she's like, that's such a, that's such a mom thing. Like you try to be so respectful, like you need to do something, but you want to be so respectful of your son and what he's doing by being like conspicuous. As, you could just walk yeah, by. You yeah, just walk by and it would have been fine. I know. Be like, I gotta respect my son's space. Oh and my get god, by. how sweet was she? Just the, I bet you she makes some like lemonade and sandwiches too, yeah. or, or like some craft dinner and puts it inside a, a ketchup. A lot of ketchup in, in it. I wonder what it. Jamie Pine's preference to craft dinner is. Oh my dinner god, is. that was <laughs> the cutest thing ever, and the fact that she like looked back. And she like made sure he was the nonverbal like, oh, no. communication then, is what yeah. did it. Oh, that was such a sweet little exchange. That was a fun one. I want more of that. I love those things caught on stream that are like so wholesome because you don't mm -hmm. really get you don't really get a lot of that lately. You don't so get much of like, those from my posts, no. Especially not Brody's. No. Uh, listen, that's it for our meter. Remember, you can hit us up on our socials just to say hi or send us stuff to react to. Someone type in exclamation mark socials right now so you can see all of our channels. Until tomorrow, we'll see ya.